Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we're coming back to this plant here. Now this plant was covered in the first or second season, I believe, and we're coming back to it because the specimen is good looking in the dead of winter. And gardening is a ideally a 365 day a year affair. You want to have something happening in your garden year round. And this plant is a surprising powerhouse of happening. Now, what is it? Its scientific name is Yucca filamentosa, also known commonly as Adam's Needle. Yeah, the old-time botanists love to stick biblical terms on everything. Whatever. That's their choice. Now, it is in the Asparagaceae family, which if you remember, asparagus itself, obviously, Asparagaceae, you know, but Butcher's Broom from last season is also Asparagaceae family, and there are a lot of things in this family. It's worth looking into. But anyway... The word yucca is from the carby word, and I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, C-A-R-B-I, but y'all can correct me in the comments if I'm not. Uh, the carby word for manahat, a.k.a. cassava. And this is due to the visual similarity between the two via the roots. Yucca here produces these little tubers, well, some of them can get very large, and they can be the size of actual potatoes. And they're chunky, and they've got a sort of brown skin and white flesh. But I'll get to what those are used for later. Now, the second term here, filamentosa, comes from the fibrous contents in these leaves, which come in long strands. The ethnobotany use for those strands will be covered later in the segment again, but we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, this yucca is native to the Americas, North America, South America, possibly Central America, or it may have been introduced there. I found conflicting sources on that part. But anyway, it is noted to be specifically native to South Carolina, south to Florida, and out to the Mississippi. However, it may or may not be native to North Carolina also. I mean, North and South Carolina are really just artificial boundaries. So does the plant care? I think not. It is hardy in USDA zones 4 through 10 and classified as a hardy perennial. I should note that in the last time I covered this, this said, actually, it was hardy to zone 5, but I found credible information saying it can go up to 4. Additionally, its soil pH information has changed. I found out that its soil pH preference is 6 to 8. It used to say 5.5 to 7 something or other, but I found multiple high-quality credible sources that say this exact number, so I'm going to go with them. Additionally, it prefers coarse sandy soil, but will adapt to a wide range of soil types, as evidenced in the pot here. That is obviously not coarse sandy soil in there. That is potting soil. And it doesn't seem to care. It's doing just fine. It's living its best life. In fact, eventually, it's going to bust through the sides of this pot and get on the loose. But in the meanwhile, it's doing just fine. I brought it into the lab for the winter. Uh, I should point out it had a rather nasty fire ant infestation at one point. I nuked them from orbit. Not sorry. Not even remotely sorry. I picked that thing up and they just started pouring out. And I was like, oh, all right, all right. Yeah, I used seven liquid, which if you mix it as a concentrate, like you're going to spray it and then you drench the plant's roots, it just wipes them out. I don't like using pesticides, but in that case, I couldn't bring this plant in to study it otherwise. Taking them out is actually what slowed down the production of this video. But anyway, we're here now. Win for everybody. So, its exposure is, is full sun, but it will accept partial shade. Full sun is better. Every instance of this plant I've ever seen is usually in full sun. It may get some shade coincidentally, but full sun is best. Its height can be 4 to 8 feet, and its width can be 2 to 6 feet, though I've seen references claiming up to 12 feet. I'll believe that when I see it. Oh, the kittens are listening to me talk. You heard, I'm sure you heard that off camera. Anyway... Its other common names are kittens, that was a kitten, Spanish bayonet, needle palm yucca, St. Peter's palm, desert candle, com, C-O-M-M, -M, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, and spoon leaf yucca. I don't know where that one came from. I don't see anything spoony here, but whatever, maybe there's a mutant. Now, uh, this plant is good because it attracts butterflies, hummingbirds, and moths. And also apparently a mischief. Mischief. Anyway, 
So, uh, yes, it attracts the pollinators, which is great. It is very resistant to deer and rabbits. It is very drought tolerant. It likes sandy soils, which we have in the sand hills in North Carolina, so that's a win for everybody. It will form colonies, and you can see it's offshooting in there. In nature, it would sh offshoot all over the place, form colonies, and it would form these semi-impenetrable thickets because these spines up here are no joke. They go through protective clothing. This is a plant for defensive landscaping that just so happens to have a pretty flower and comes in varieties with variegations in yellows and whites. So it doesn't have to be plain green like this one. This one is actually blue-green in the summer. I just appreciate its natural look. Now, it is also tolerant of air pollution and saltwater intrusion, so you can plant this one at your house at the beach. When? And with, uh... Oceans rising, that might be very important in the not-too-distant future, as this plant is very good for holding soil and preventing erosion. Its shape actually allows it to catch leaves and create a compost layer. It, I had to clean that out for this pot when I brought it in, because I didn't want to bring in anything else by accident, then I discovered fire ants. But it will catch leaves, they'll fall down in there, it'll form its own compost layer, its own leaves will, plus or minus a mischief, uh... Its own leaves will form a dense layer. They'll shed right below it, and they'll help lock it in place. It is a true evergreen in that regard. Now, here's the best part. The flowers are edible. The seed capsules and the stem are edible, raw or cooked. The tubers are edible, but contain saponins, so you have to slow cook them to destroy the saponins. That's fine, and when you deep fry them, like french fries... You wouldn't know the difference between them and french fries because, other than shape, because they're going to be a little chunkier, they taste exactly the same just about. Now, the ethnobotany. Yes, that's something I'm new I'm trying to do with native plants is ethnobotany. So, the ethnobotany of this plant, it is very well noted in multiple sources, including... USDA sources, ag extension sources, a master gardener sources, believe it or not, and a few college sources that Native Americans use this plant for a variety of things. Food, medicine, cordage, and soap. Now, soap coming from the saponins in the roots, which is the basis of the bubbling action and the slick action of soap. Okay. Cordage coming from the fibers in the leaves. You can actually separate them, dry them, braid them, and turn it into basically what amounts to jute twine or something close. Now, medicine, I believe certain um, some things about the sap and the juices can be used to treat certain things. And I didn't research that thoroughly, but again, if you're going to try to use this to treat your ailments, always consult a certified practitioner. The last thing we want to hear at Lithium Garden Life is that someone tried to use some plant for medicine and then things fell off their body. Life's too short to have things fall off your body. But anyway, food, we covered. It's edible. To um, the only thing that isn't really edible is the leaves. That's a win. This is a multi-use plant. Those are the best kind. So, with that said, if you have any thoughts on yucca filamentosa, my old thought on this plant used to be, ironically, yucca, what an aptly named plant. Now, I don't think so. I've realized its potential and I've changed my mind. But if you have any thoughts, do you plant yucca? Do you have it in your yard? Please leave a comment. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel. We're shooting for 500. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. And as always, folks, thank you for watching. Keep them growing. Oh, and check out the blog. We're still doing forage foods. It's ragweed and bearded beggar ticks, which almost sounds like a slur, but it's not. Anyway, thank you for watching.